Oh my god, peeps, we back. We back! What's up, party people? We back in the his house. <laughs> and we f- apparently have forgotten how we do this, because we have an intro, you guys. Oh, we do? <laughs> <laughs> that was the cold open. <laughs> Stop motion and puppetry, special effects and CGI, and everything in between. We back. I am your host, Carrie Dreblo. And I'm Jason and not. <laughs> I'm bleeping I'm bleeping that, don't worry. <laughs> and I'm Becca Knott. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait. Who the hell are you? <laughs> I am your third host. Oh yeah, and also my wife. <gasps> Aw, marriage. A lot has happened to me. Uh- like that like that's like the song from the noah's ark short in fantasia 2000 no that's the graduation that's the graduation song well it's still dumb anyway (laughs) so for for all two of you who listen to the podcast we have not when was our last episode that we actually released oh good question it was something last christmas last christmas (laughs) that's not i'm not gonna continue that because i'm way off key it could it could also have been steven universe it was bojack actually part one (laughs) really (laughs) wow (laughs) season six part one (laughs) so it's been nine months we could have had a baby in this time but we didn't we did not we didn't (laughs) yes uh you would think in a year like 2020 we would have ample time to uh pursue a lot of destination animation episodes but we, but we didn't. No, because, uh... <laughs> well, it, <laughs> What's the reason? It turns out that when movie theaters are closed because of a worldwide pandemic, it's kind of hard to have new things to talk about. I mean, true. Yeah, that's part of it. I think the other part of it is just... Laziness? I was going to say mental health, but... Well, I mean, true. Well, it's laziness on my part. <laughs> mental health on my part, too. Yeah. So I'm just lazy. It's just been... It's been a year, so we're going to try to come back to doing something fun. Because we got a new release. Yay, yay, yay. And it's a good one. Yes. Yes, yes. But we have to get some stuff out of the way. So first of all, we were actually recording an episode in January. Maybe someday we'll release that as like a lost episode. It was like part one of what was probably going to be like... A (laughs) multi-part. An epic. Yeah, where we were going to um, do a retrospective of the whole decade. And maybe we could revisit that. What I can say is we finished recording part one and it's been sitting on my editing desk for the past like eight months unfinished yeah and then we recorded half of part two we were up to 2017 but did not finish that so yeah that's right i I will take the blame on that that is totally on me and not having the like follow through necessary to put it through my editing software and post it well like now i know how to do video editing or at least i have a editing software again so i can take a load off if you need it yeah shameless shameless plug our boy jason's uh been doing some youtubes (laughs) Yeah. Uh, what's your channel, Jason? Film Freak. Nice. Um, some of you listeners may actually be here because he's going to promote us in, on the next video. Yes. Uh, you might be here from his channel where he did an Owl House video that got pretty uh, popular. We'll talk about Owl House in a minute. But um, I think I would like to revisit that decade retrospective. But I think we should start fresh because I don't remember what we said. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we'll worry. We'll, we'll get it in post. But yeah, it's been a weird year. Some Not a lot of stuff has been released, but... It's been a good opportunity for us to catch up on stuff, at least. Like, um, Yes. So, first of all, I guess the major thing that happened in January, release-wise, would have been Owl House. The Owl House. Yeah. Oops. Heck yeah, it's major. We definitely mentioned it on the podcast before. I know I must have mentioned how... Um, the, how it was made for you? Uh, yeah, basically. Um, how much I was anticipating it. And I must say that it delivered. Yes. 100%. 100% for me also. We could do... Oh, we could, we could do an episode on the first season. Probably. Yeah. What's on Disney Plus here in Canada? It's not on Disney Plus in Canada yet. It is in America. Not last time we've checked. Yeah, it is. Um, It's weird. I think it's because like it took a couple extra weeks in Canada to finish airing on TV. For some reason, a lot of you know networks are still prioritizing their television channels for some reason. Yeah. Which I I could foresee that changing in the near future. Television? Pff, who watches that anymore? <laughs> we ha- We only have cable because it was part of our internet package and we never plugged in the box. Yes. 
Yeah, I think let's hold off on talking about Owl House because uh, we'll probably do an episode on it. That's a good topic for an episode. We can do like a two word summary, which for me, that would be it's awesome. It's probably my favorite animated TV hey, show. That's two, in two words, a- not more than two words. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, for me, it's definitely filling the void that Steven Universe left. Oh, that's right. Uh, Steven Universe ended. Oh, yeah, that was in March. Yeah, we did not talk about Steven Universe Future. Steven um, Universe Future. Controversial season, apparently. 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 Yeah. See, like, we we here in the Not House don't like to indulge in negative sides of the fandom. I mean, it's cartoons, man. Just, yeah. just enjoy them. And I mean, like, you can dislike the thing. I don't care. But I liked it, so. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, like, you, you're not really obligated to yeah. seek out dissenting opinions if you don't want to yeah exactly especially over something harmless like a cartoon but uh let's put that negativity aside what do you think of steven universe future carrie um i loved it even though you know as a whole it was definitely like so steven universe was like really optimistic this is more like kind of coming down from the high of the positive Mm. so to me it felt heartfelt like that's the thing that I want in my animation is I want it to be heartfelt. I don't necessarily want it to just appeal to a mass audience. I want it to be emotionally honest. And this was a very emotionally honest season and it gave me feels. It, yeah, it was very, definitely. It was very raw in a way that like, not, not to say that the original series was ever um, pulling its punches or anything, but it was raw in a different way because it was approaching those more cynical "Quote unquote cynical." It was it was tackling harder topics, I think. Yeah, like a lot of people criticize the end of regular Steven Universe for like the character arcs of the diamonds being too fast, and for like you're giving these like dictatorial things a redemption arc. Oh, but yeah. again, like focus on the raw emotional honesty. Focus on. I know I'm biased because the LGBT hit so close to home for me. Yeah, it did. Like yeah. they just captured that part of it perfectly. So. Whatever, that's that's my take again. Yeah, for sure. Uh we could do a, we could do an episode on future too. Oh, I had a thought. Um, Here come that thought. <laughs> uh yes. Just I've been thinking about lately how like I prefer animation to live action at any day of the week and I think it's just because the quality of animation has gotten so much better in the last decade. Not not just from a technical standpoint, but from a writing standpoint and that emotional honesty you were talking about, Carrie. Yeah. Like that's that's the main thing. It's honest, it's genuine yeah it's more emotionally satisfying oh, what was it we were watching we're ducktales <laughs> Duck uh we've been watching yeah okay yeah to con- to just continue and move on um we've been watching the ducktales reboots the 2017 which is related to owl house because dana Somewhat. terrence was uh dana terrace terrence terrace um was a director on ducktales um you haven't started watching yet huh carrie I've seen about the first half of the first season, oh, nice. so I still need to finish it. Yeah, it's it's very, very good. I watched uh, the original 80s DuckTales, 87 DuckTales as a kid. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Same. And I liked it well enough. I tried to revisit it on Disney+. Plus. Um, it's not that great. But this, <laughs> this new show is uh, extremely good. Oh, yeah. Like, I had a similar experience with Disney+. Plus. I randomly, on an impulse, turned on old episodes of Rescue Rangers, because they're on, they're on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Chip and Dale! Rescue Rangers! And, like, the nostalgia was like, oh my god, I remember this! But, you know, uh-huh. they, they're they fun, self-contained 30-minute stories, but, you know, they follow the formula a lot. Yeah. You know what? Actually, I have a similar comparison. We watched a few episodes of a 101 Dalmatian Lane. Mm-hmm. Remember? Yeah. You mean 101 Dalmatian Street or? Whatever. Or the old one. No, 101 Dalmatian Street, I guess. Why did I call it Dalmatian Lane? I thought they were in Britain. That they has are. nothing to do with anything. <laughs> um, and the new show is quite cute. Um, yeah, it's cute. I'd watch more, but like it's... Uh, it's very self-contained, like you yeah. said. But I tried to go back and watch the old 101 show that I watched in the 90s as a kid. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> not as not not, not as, great as good as you remember. Like take off the nostalgia goggles, people. Yeah. Things can be good. <laughs> things can you can outgrow things and sometimes. Things, yeah. Yeah, I know. Just like syndrome outgrew incredible Mr. Incredible. <laughs> no. I've outgrown you. <laughs> it's exactly like that. <laughs> I've outgrown you 101 Dalmatians. <laughs> Friendship ended with 101 Dalmatians. 101 Dalmatian Street is my new friend. Why did I call it 101 Dalmatian Lane? I don't know. Carrie, you were about to say something? Oh, uh, no. I was just saying, like, to me, we are currently in a golden age of animation. Like, Absolutely. 
the, you could argue that theatrical animation, I am a really big fan of the old 2D 90s style, but, you know, the things that are coming out now, there's genuine, genuine artistic effort put into, I don't want to say almost everything, because there's still plenty of just, you know, like ba- your basic schlock. Schlock. How about the crudes, too? I, I shouldn't on that i never watched the first yeah, one. yeah so. the original was fine like definitely not, i've never seen it either definitely i have seen it it's definitely not chris sander's best work um i'd say it's kind of to dream work similar to what onward was to pixar where it's a perfectly good emotional story at its core but i don't know it just felt like it was missing something yeah i uh, yeah onward is like the one movie that came out this year right again. before it all went down yeah <laughs> so, it was oh, the yeah. last movie we saw in theaters um so just to briefly talk about onward uh is good i liked it a lot yeah i liked it fine but uh, like you carrie i feel like it's missing a certain kind of oomph that like, makes it like a, a true pixar yeah. quality movie like is it just me or is theatrical animation just not doing it for you anymore compared to tv animation I mean, in, on, in the emotional punch it's kind of like disney and pixar in the in the past few years they've i feel like they've kind of been going through the motions yeah same so there was some insight that on one of my favorite animation youtube channels that like frozen 2 was very very rushed through production same with the incredibles 2 where you know, Disney is just like, uh, nope, you aren't going to get extra time to fix this. You have to have it out now. We have the toys ready to go. Finish it. Ugh. That's also what happened to Star Wars Episode Nine. Anyway. <laughs> we do not talk about Star Wars on this channel. No, not anyway, anymore. Anyway, you've been watching Star Wars The Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Anyway. <laughs> um, oh, what other, a lot of cartoons kind of happened. Two seasons of Harley Quinn happened since we, like, last talked about yes, it. Yes, Harley Quinn is a great show, too. Harley Quinn is great. Uh, more adult, definitely. I have not seen that one, so I'll let you two do it. Um, I mean, not too much to say. It's really funny. Yeah, um, it's funny. What's her name who plays Harley Quinn? Uh, she, uh, she's in The Big Bang Theory, or K- she was. K- Kaylee Kuku? Kuku. Do you know who we're talking about, Carrie? Uh-uh. The blonde one, Penny. Penny from, uh... And she was on Penny? Eight Simple Rules as well. Penny? <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no worries. Uh, she's a really good Harley Quinn. Ooh, between Harley Quinn, Owl House, and she the lesbians have been winning this year. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's true, yeah, though. It's true. Oh, and uh, Kipo and the Age of Wonder Beasts was great, too. And, and a win for the gays. A win for the gays, yes. You they need s- one, too. Yeah. I mean, honestly, isn't that something that you don't see a lot of men loving men romance in cartoons? I think it's kind of still considered a little risque compared to women loving women, which is bullshit. But yeah, it was nice, nice of Kipo to kind of break the ice on that. Wasn't there one show that did a MLM? I forget what it was. Uh, Dragon Prince, Rayla's two dads. Yeah, Dragon Prince is great too. But like, they're not focal characters in the way, like, not not to spoil it, but there's a character in Kipo who is a focal character who, who is gay. Is, he's gay. Yeah. I forget though. There was one show where it's centered on an MLM. I can't remember. Was it a cartoon? Yes. Oh, what would it have been? Cannot remember. What, did we watch it? I don't remember. I don't remember was it either. was it like the main character or? Yeah, I can't remember. I'll revisit that thought later once I remember. I think, remember. But yes, I think remember, must. Carrie, remember. That is a, <laughs> remember. <laughs> that is definitely a thing, though. That for some reason, uh, WLW has kind of become a little bit more acceptable in the mainstream. But we're still working on MLM. Yeah, M- multi-level marketing. Um, anyway, <laughs> speaking of WLW, Adventure Time: Distant Lands, the new episode of Obsidian dropped today, which we today, haven't watched yet. as of this recording. Yeah, we haven't watched it yet, but I'm sure there's going to be a few more wins in there because at the end of Adventure Time, Marceline and Bubblegum got together. Yes, we did a video about that we did. Uh, podcast. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, that was just a small solo one. That was one of our early ones. And I missed out on it because I still have not caught up. Oh, yeah. Adventure Time is, uh, I can understand it not going <coughs> to everyone's taste. It definitely lost me, like, towards the end there, but yeah. then it got me back. I'm not saying it's not to my taste, just that it's a long show. <laughs> it is. It is. It didn't need to be as long as it. It's what, It's like... One of those shows that has overarching plots, but it's mostly about, oh, what's this weird thing the characters are doing this episode? Yeah. As I did mention Kipo and the Age of the Wonder Beast. That's a show that premiered, like, was it the same? It was pretty close to when <laughs> Owl House premiered. It was and, in, like, February, I think. Yeah, it was around the same time. And we must have mentioned it at one point in the podcast in just, like, a newsreel. It's already gone through all three of its seasons. It's very good, very stylistic. Every main character is black, which is cool. Like, oh, yeah. that's something that never really hit me until someone pointed it out. Like, one, two, three, four, five main cast, one of which is a pet, one of which is non-human, but the three human characters are all black, which is cool. Yes. Yeah. 
This is something you don't really think I of. I did not notice, but cool. Yeah. Well, I also haven't watched Kipo yet. Yeah, like, along with um, a lot of LGBT rep becoming more normalized, a lot of POC rep is becoming more normalized, too. Like, Owl House, like, loses a... Uh, what is she? Dominican, Dominican American. Yeah, Dominican. Oh, Amphibia! Amphibia, Owl House's sister show. Oh, what is she again? She's Thai. She is, yeah, Thai. What's her name again? Anne. Anne. Played Anne by Brenda Choi. Song, who is a great voice actress. I think she does a really good job. But, uh, Carrie, big recommend Amphibia, because I don't think you've started that either. I have yet, seen huh? the first half of the first season. Nice. Yeah, it gets it gets pretty good. Sprig is, like, my favorite character <laughs> of anything. He's so Sprague sweet. Sprig is good boy. I love Sprig. What else? Has there been any, like, anime or anything, Carrie? I have not kept up on anime this year since my <gasps> attempt at the spring anime derby that failed miserably. Ah, oh, no worries. The best I can say from that season is that the first... Three episodes of BNA were exceptional. That is on Netflix. Oh, we gotta check that out. Beastars, which came out in the winter, is amazing. Yeah, we watch Beastars too. It's so good. Uh, That's another adult one, like like Harley Quinn. Not for the kiddies, but very, very, very good. Get out of here, children. Impossible to recommend to my friends because it's so horny, but... (laughs) (laughs) Yes, basically. Like, I don't know how to recommend it to people. Yeah, it is a really... It's like Zootopia, but horny. Yeah. (laughs) Zootopia that... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and then the other recommendation that i had was my next life as a villainous all roots lead to do Ooh. hilarious show amazing watercolor backgrounds mm-hmm. it's basically like an isekai but with otome games so you know i don't know what that means <laughs> okay it is somebody i know i know like I was saying in chat before, I know the important words like Kuma and Yuri. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there's an anime show that's one of my favorites, Yuri Kuma Arashi, which has very similar themes to Wolf Walkers. So uh, big recommend on that one. But yeah. The- She's one of them lesbian bears. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta put, I was gonna say like, what the heck is Wolf Walkers as a segue? But we actually still have a lot of stuff to talk about news wise. Yes, news. The new Digimon anime was quite good. We didn't keep up. We only watched like the first two or three episodes. Yeah. Um, but I want to get back into it because it's it was quite good. Oh, I'm looking at our list. Oh, 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 close enough. Close enough. Yeah, that was a good show. Yeah, I like that too. Same yeah. guy who did a regular show. J.G. Quintel? Yeah, I think I should it. write people's names down. But <laughs> yeah, it's basically just, what would you even call it? I almost called it like Slice of Life. Slice of Life, but very mm-hmm. weird. It's but like, weird, yeah. it's, it's regular show, but they can curse. <laughs> yeah, basically. It's on <laughs> HBO Max, is it? Yes. Oh, another thing that I watched on Netflix was uh, The Midnight Gospel, which is by the creator of Adventure Time. And it's basically just, Ken Ward, yeah. yeah, it's basically just a show about like these psychedelic trippy conversations that were had about the on universe podcast, set right? to animation. It's really inventive. I liked it. I'd heard of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My brother was telling us that it's like from a podcast or something. Yeah. Um, d- definitely want to check that out. Yeah, that's a good he, show. He to... recommended getting high, but I didn't <laughs> absorb my cartoon sober. Yeah, <laughs> me too. It's still it's still like a good cartoon just to chill and think about the universe with. So, uh, recommend on that one. It's fun. But uh, going back to HBO Max, uh, Infi- Infinity Train. Infinity Train had a third season. Yeah, wait, there was a second season too. <laughs> there, oh yeah, we. Oh. I'm looking at our thumbnails. We never talked about the second Oh, season. I still haven't watched the second season. I need to. The third season is where it gets real. Well, yeah, because they're on HBO Max instead of Cartoon Network. It got pretty rough in Dark. season three. <laughs> like, jeez, especially the last episode, which we won't spoil it because uh, Carrie hasn't watched yet. It's all good. It's all good. It's a lot to keep up Can with. Can I take a moment and vent about how we have way too many streaming services now? Yes, please. <laughs> please. This do. will lead into the topic of today. So Wolf Walkers is only coming out on Apple Plus Apple and like a Plus. limited theatrical release. And so Disney Plus has their own streaming service. Like NBC has Peacock and Peacock. there's like CBS Digital and HBO, HBO Max. Max and Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime. Like Harley Quinn's on Warner Brothers, so look. Oh, yeah, uh, the DC service, I think uh, nobody used that, so what happened to that? I think it's it's, a, it's just HBO Max now. Cool. Because Warner Brothers owns HBO. This would have been a good segue into our main topic, but we still have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, yeah. It Gary, a- we haven't watched Over the Moon yet. Tell us about it. Yeah. So Over the Moon is the first movie directed by uh, our boy, Glenn Keane. Our boy, your boy. So basically, it's a co-production with Glenn Keane at the helm, made by Pearl, which is DreamWorks Chinese studio. Yeah, we've talked about it before. They did that, like, abominable movie. Yeah, yes, Yes, they did. Not the one with Zendaya as Michi. (laughs) Yeah, but... Uh, Sorry, go ahead. So the movie is about a uh, Chinese family and... 
they're like basically they're trying to cope with a loss cool. and there's a legend there's a story about how like there's a it's based on a chinese mythology story about the goddess in the moon and Ooh, rabbit their pet rabbit basically she's setting out to the moon to try to make her family whole again somehow and like that sounds cute yeah it's a very very disney-esque story but what i can say is that the even though the story is kind of basic it still hit me in the feels so you know they they can still do that and also holy smokes the production design is gorgeous there's some unbelievably lush scenes of 2d animation and it's like all glen keen and then once they get to the moon the color palette is like this candy like extravaganza based on k-pop aesthetics it's (laughs) visually fantastic story-wise a bit middle of the road like what you'd expect from well you know a disney veteran yeah i'd say it's kind of like it's like a b-tier disney story cool type situation but yeah i can definitely soft recommend that for the visuals alone that that movie really knocked it out of the park visually yeah we'll definitely have to check it out do you want to talk about mulan jason no all right let's move on (laughs) (laughs) yeah we have to acknowledge that came out this summer but yeah it's a disney remake they put it on disney plus for like 30 bucks so we we mooched off a friend's account and watched the first 40 minutes and then we tapped out we bailed yeah i do have a recommendation though if you do want to see a live action movie that centers on traditional chinese martial arts and follows the story of a young girl who is forced to act like an aristocrat when she wants to go out and live an exciting life in the wild. Just watch Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Ooh. I rewatched that movie right after seeing Mulan. That movie is still one of my favorites of all time. Huge recommend on that one. Gorgeous. Anyway. I've never seen it, but I remember like as a kid, like all the hype around it. A lot of Oscar buzz and stuff. Did it win Best Picture or just Best Foreign? Nope. It did not win Best Picture. I think it was the first foreign film nominated for Best okay. Picture, but that ceiling was not broken until last year. Parasite. Parasite, which is this not year, animated, actually. so we can't talk about it. But <laughs> Yeah, Mulan, I, I emotionally tapped out like immediately, but I actually tapped out once they were like, uh, it must Tranquil be as a forest, puts a fire within, and I was like, well, that's it. Goodbye. Yeah, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> Like, okay, we don't need any harder soul. Speaking of soul. <laughs> yes, let's go into the news, if we're doing it. <laughs> yes, I do <laughs> nice we're notes. doing the news. We have some interesting things coming out within the next couple few months. Yes. Uh, so yeah, Soul, uh, Pixar's next film, which got delayed, delayed. I think they were kind of hoping that it could go to theaters, but um, I think they made the right choice. Yeah, it's coming to Disney Plus on Christmas. That's cute. Yeah, they finally gave up. Which, I mean, as much as I miss seeing movies in theaters, which... Wolf Walkers really hammered that home for me, which Ugh. we'll get to. Um, oh, I wish I could have seen that in the theater. But it's not the time. Which nope. We won't get into too much of the, you know, the state of the world. We're a happy podcast. But yeah, I mean, going to streaming is the way to go right now. I yeah. did I did see Wolf Walkers in theaters, um, and the theater was empty. I was the only person in there. Wow. <laughs> that just shows you how dead it is. Well, That's yeah. life. Yeah, like, our local theater is playing, like, classic movies, like Toy Story and, like, Halloween stuff to try to stay in business for five bucks. But, yeah, they're struggling. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks. And we could get into the political aspect, but let's talk about Soul instead. Um, I'm looking forward to it. The the review, have there been reviews yet? Carrie, you usually keep track of that stuff. So it came out at, uh, I forget what film festival it was, but... It was released at a film festival where it received unanimous praise and people are calling it probably Pixar's most ambitious movie in terms of the height of the concept it's going for. And it currently has a 100% positive rating after its first 25 reviews. That's, that's pretty good. And I... I know a lot of people were a little concerned about the premise. Um, I try not to watch too many trailers or clips and stuff, so I don't get too much spoilage, which is a, you know, a habit I developed from watching 10 minute cartoons where a three minute clip was like a third of the episode, you know? Uh Um, But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. uh, That's cool to hear. Our boy Pete Doctor delivering again. Of course, always. Yeah, what was I just thinking? Yeah, about the emotional satisfaction of TV animation right now versus uh, theatrical. Like, hopefully they uh, break out of their comfort zone a little with this one. But that remains to be seen. I, I think I'm going to like it either way. Yeah, it looks neat. Yeah, I I was mostly looking forward to it. But now that I've seen the reviews, I'm like, okay, this is... I really want Wolfwalkers to win Best Picture just for, just on, like, 
principle. Yeah, on principle, but, you know, because Pixar always wins it and, always. you know, give somebody else some recognition for a change. A cartoon saloon has put in the work and they've earned it. Yeah. I don't know. What did, what did Breadwinner lose to? Breadwinner? Uh, Coco. Okay, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah. I'll allow it. Pixar at their best is still great. So oh, yeah. it's like, you know, there's some movies where I'm like, all right, they probably deserve it this year, even though I really liked this other film. Big Hero 6 did not deserve its song of the sea was robbed. Anyway. Oh, did it? That's so weird. Uh, like, Big Hero 6 is fine. So when it won, it was like, okay, I, all right. Like, you really, you could have swapped out Big Hero 6 with Lego Movie and yeah, I would have liked weird. that better. Lego <laughs> Movie was snubbed. That was weird. Everyone loved Lego Movie. You know what else everybody loves? Animaniacs. Yes. Yeah. Well, mostly. <laughs> mostly everyone. <laughs> I watched Animaniacs as a kid. That's coming out uh, tomorrow on Hulu oh, is as it? of this recording. Cool. All right. I watched Pinky and the Brain more than I watched Animaniacs, but hey, Pinky and the Brain are back too. Slappy. Where is Slappy? <laughs> Where is Slappy Squirrel? She was the best character. Where is she? <laughs> this is ageist. Uh, Rayla and the Last Dragon is Raya. Disney's... Raya. Ra- oh, actually, Raya. Raya. I said Raylo tra- because I've got Dragon Ball brain. Uh, no Raylo. We don't talk about Star Wars on this podcast. Although, uh, Kelly Marie Tran is uh, Raya. Raya. Raya and the Last Dragon. Yeet. And honestly, good for her. Yeah, good. Good for her. That's all I'm going to say about it. Good for her. Yeah. Uh, that's coming out in March? Is that what that is? Yes, the 12th of March. Yeah, nice. that movie still looks awesome to me. Like, I'm hoping... It's like, finally, Disney is doing another original movie. They're finally taking a break from all their sequels. I'm tired of Disney sequels. <laughs> is it original? I'm going to find out. <laughs> I have a feeling it is. Well, what what would it be a sequel to? Well, not like a sequel, but like an adaptation. Oh, well, I'm fine with their adaptations. I mean, that, that, yeah. like, that's what Disney okay. <laughs> that's what Disney has been doing since they opened, is adaptations. Yeah. I, I was going to call you out. And I was like, it's, it's not original, actually, killed. <laughs> killed. Um, yeah, it looks interesting. I'm, uh, I'm into it. I really want to see footage of the dragon. Some people aren't on board with her design. I think it looks cute. Um, Isn't she Aquafina? Yes. Cool. Well, it's it's based on, like, the East Asian concept of a dragon, where it's, like, tied to yeah. water and, like, serpentine yeah, she, more than, she like... she looks like a fishy. Yeah, which, again, that's actually culturally accurate, where, you know, like, Western dragons are the ones with wings and that breathe fire and whatnot. You don't need to tell me about dragonology. I've read the books by... These are fictional books called Dragonology by a fictional author, and I was talking about them to a friend yesterday, and I don't remember the author's name, so let's <laughs> move on. Awesome. What the hell is Earwig and the Witch? Well, I don't even know what that is. Oh, that's a Studio Ghibli's next movie, uh, oh, directed nice. oh. by Goro Miyazaki, Goro. and it is Studio Ghibli's first CG movie. Ooh. Oh. Oh, I bet they can do it, too, because they, Nino Kuni. Well, Nino, they didn't really do the, like, game Nino Kuni, they did the animation for it. No, but it melded. So true, I guess. Yeah, so, I never. I only played the demo of Nino Kuni. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so is it based on Hedwig and the Angry Itch? <laughs> <laughs> You're Hedwig and the Angry Witch. <laughs> I actually wrote down Hedwig and the Witch at first. <laughs> it's just, it, yeah, it's just the flow of the title made me think of that. But yeah, um, yes, we don't speak of Harry Potter on this podcast anymore. <laughs> yeah. But Earwig and the Witch is based off of a book by Diana Jones Wyatt, the same author as Howl's Moving Castle. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Diana Wynne Jones. Diana Wynne Jones. Jeez. Just don't take my word on any names. I'm terrible with names. <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> That's why I'm here. And speaking of CGI anime, when can I watch uh, Rupon the Third the First? Oh, yeah. I'm horny for that trailer. and I, I really don't know when it comes movie. out. I think it's been out. It's just when is it going to land on streaming services so we can, uh, you know, yo ho ho over there and that's... <laughs> look, Let man. Us... We already talked about how there's like fifty different streaming services. I can't pay for all of them. Let us uh, move away from topics of uh, ah! and talk no one, about no one why, said the p word. Why we are here? Why are we here? What's going on? It's been like half an hour. Why are we here? Just to suffer. <laughs> Oh, so apparently, apparently Loop on the Third, the first, is on digital as of December 15th, so about a month from now. And it's coming out on Apple TV. (laughs) (laughs) Apple TV again? God damn it, we are. (laughs) Shush, no, no incriminating, no incriminating. Nothing incriminating. Editor, bleep that out. Whatever. Release Wolfwalkers on on DVD, please, G-Kids. I want to give you my money, but I don't want to give Apple my money. Yeah. Yes. With that in mind, let us talk about Wolfwalkers right after this break. After these messages. After these messages. (laughs) This is where uh, we would put, like, our advertiser, but we don't have one. 
Ah, oh, here we go again. We're doing a podcast about wolf walkers. Cartoon Saloon, the kings right now of 2D animation. Yes. Jason loves Cartoon Saloon. Yes, I do. I got a, I got a thing here. Never mind. Yes, I love- Turn, put your phone in airplane mode. I thought somebody was contacting me. I'm contacting you. Put your phone in airplane mode. <laughs> but yes, I love Cartoon Saloon. I have loved their movies ever since I discovered- I will take your phone oh. from you. <laughs> ever since I discovered uh, The Secret of Kells in Blockbuster. And uh, Carrie, you, you love Cartoon Saloon too. Talk, talk about that. Oh, <laughs> heck yeah. There are probably- Like, I made a list of my favorite animation studios that are currently making. Cartoon Saloon was in my top three with Ghibli and Laika. Yeah. Oh, that's a good list. Eek, I lo- yeah. So Cartoon Saloon is famous for making movies based on Irish mythology, and mm-hmm. this is the third in the series that did. And they have just been upping the ante with every single movie. It's yes. honestly. I remember hearing about Secret of Kells uh, because of the 2009 Oscars. They did this cute little clip where all the um, where some characters from the nominated movies talked about, you know, the nomination. And I saw that and I was like, whoa. Hand drawn. Hand drawn. I'm going to go and deal with the cat. Yeah, that was actually like one of the better things that the Oscars has done is like that little animation thing. It's really funny. And God, that was a good year for animation. It was, though. Like, especially when you think about two hand drawn, two stop motion, one CGI was the nominees. I got to resent the fact that they did the whole best picture and best anime because it kind of renders the category pointless. Let's be real. If none of the other movies earned a Best Picture nom, then why would they win Best Animated, right? Yeah. It's dumb. So yeah, they have their uh, trilogy of uh, Irishness. They also have the their other movie is The Breadwinner, which I think is my personal favorite because it's... I, I was talking to a friend about it the other day, and the best word I can describe The Breadwinner with would be relentless. It's just... it's It's so painful, but like in such a good way. Like, that's the kind of thing I mean when I say, like, about, like, modern cartoons being so much more emotionally satisfying than, yeah. like, live action. Like, even if it's not happy feelings, you know, it's just relentless. That's just yeah. the best word for it. It hurts so good. It hurts so good. What do you think about the, uh, what's your favorite uh, cartoon saloon? I believe Wolf Walkers is now my favorite. Yeah. Probably before that, it would be a case where I love all three of them in different ways, so it would be difficult for me to pick a favorite, Mm -hmm. because, like, I love The Secret of Kells for its inspiration in the imagery of the Book of Kells and how it extends that design out to the forest, and you have all these spiraling branches, and, like, that is totally my aesthetic, but the story was kind of, eh, you know, like, the villains weren't that compelling. You know, I'm, uh, we were watching, um... Secret of Kells the other day, actually, and I pointed out to Jason, just to get a little uh, nuclear here, the villains are so animalistic in a way that, like, they're non-human is what I mean. Yeah. Where it could have been almost controversial, except that they're Vikings, so they're white people. And I don't mean that as a negative point or a gotcha or anything, I just thought it was interesting. (laughs) Ah, gold! You know, because, like, it's a big, uh, when people of color are portrayed, I don't know if I've got. I don't know if I have a point here. And- well, it's like uh, I'm doing like a thing where I'm going to talk about like cartoon saloon movies on my channel. Plug, uh, <laughs> but like I, I can in the script I'm writing. I'm compared. I compared it to like the Huns from Mulan, and like if yeah. they had, if if Disney had gone like a step too extreme, yeah, and sure. made them like the Vikings in Kells, it would have <laughs> ruffled some feathers. But it's okay because it's white people. Jason, what's your favorite cartoon saloon movie? Song of the Sea. Song of the Sea. I really love that movie. It's a very pretty movie. I don't know the Irish words, but that's a catchy song. Uh, Gaelic is nonsense. Yeah. Which it's, we'll get into. <laughs> like, I was looking forward to that movie ever since I saw the concept trailer of it, like, after I saw Kells. And I waited, and I waited so long, and it never came to Vegas when I lived there. That was bastards. Well, how do you spell Shearsha again? Uh, S-A-O-I-R-S-E, I think. What the hell, Ireland? <laughs> so, like... None of, none of those letters are correct. I used to pronounce that word Sauris, so... <laughs> Sauris. <laughs> Actually, have I ever told you this, The Kay? Dark Lord Sauris. <laughs> um, like, Secret of Kells is a character called Ashlyn, but it's spelled, like, Aislin? Yeah, yeah A-I-S-L-I-N-D. It's spelled, like, Iceling. With an yeah, A. I actually... I actually had a classmate um, in middle school 
who her name was Ash. She pronounced it Ashleen, mm-hmm. um, but you know, same thing. But like every substitute teacher would like do the roll call and kind of struggle with it for a second, be like Aislin and the whole class. We got used to it in unison. Just correct them, Ashleen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's fun for me. But yeah, uh, Song of the Sea is a very kind of low key movie dealing with uh, like uh, Carrie said with Over the Moon about loss and how the family copes with that. Song of the Sea is way better than Over the Moon, in my opinion, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well... No shade, Glenn Keane. That, that's just a masterpiece. Yeah. I've <coughs> seen Song of the Sea three times now, but for some reason it doesn't, like, hold my attention. But on the plus side of that is every time I watch it, it's like watching a brand new movie. Yeah. So... Like, I watched... Uh, when I first got it, I streamed it for you guys. I and then I watched it again, like, by myself right after. I just watched it for the second time this afternoon. And comparing it to The Secret of Kells, it's more artistically refined it has a very very kind of like quiet yeah melancholy tone to it that permeates the entire movie i really love the ending of it too it's, yeah it's a really pretty ending yeah it, the ending they just totally went for it in terms of lighting and energy and oh gorgeous uh what was your take on breadwinner we talked about breadwinner oh, yeah breadwinner is good it's uh, it's not just good it's great all right we rewatched it for the first time and like i don't understand people who can only watch a movie once and say that's enough because <laughs> we rewatched rewatched uh, the breadwinner and like the first shot it was like oh no i know what this means now <laughs> and it hurt yeah oh, oh yeah man so i can watch like generic hollywood movies once and be satisfied yeah. but when Same. something is really meticulously crafted you cannot just watch it once I have to watch it, like, once to get the, oh my god, what's gonna happen? What does all this mean out of me? And then the second time, I have to watch it to appreciate some of the nuances, and then I can go back and look at the artistic decisions, I can just look at the character, and there's always new layers to discover with really good movies. And especially animated ones, like... Like, The Lion King came out 26 years ago. I've seen that movie literally hundreds of times. I still notice new things when I watch it, like, to this day. Whether it's something I didn't notice before, like the the mist in the jungle, or a certain way the sound is mixed, or just, like, an emotional appreciation for it. Like, the way when Simba asks his dad if, uh, are there really kings in there? Just kind of this quiet awe in the way Mufasa responds. Like, because he really does believe it, too. And that kind of got me last time I notice that mm-hmm. yeah it's just there's always something new and uh like in the case of wolf walkers we watched that like the first time a couple days ago well, how did we watch it cork film festival yes we have i have a vpn so this episode is sponsored by nord vpn please yeah so i use that to uh, order the film from the cork film festival in ireland and then uh today we watched it from a, a british film festival what's it called carrie do you know when like groupies follow a band around when they're on tour is it just groupies? I think we're groupies so. For, okay. We're wolf walkers groupies. <laughs> wolf groupies. <laughs> and I watched it thanks to Fathom Events, who actually had it at my local theater for Yay. a not cheap fifteen dollar price tag, but it was worth every penny. Woof. Yeah. Woof. But yeah, uh what Woof. I was what I was what I was trying to say before about uh second viewings and such. Like I was still really invested in Wolf Walkers, like the yeah. second time out. I was up, I was still gonna cry, even though I knew it was gonna happen, like, oh it's it's a beautiful piece of human emotion, in the words of my sister. <laughs> <laughs> what was that in response to frankenstein the theater play um, with uh benedict Cumber- benedict cumberbatch and johnny Grinch. lee miller yeah, yeah. benedict cabbage patch who yes <laughs> <laughs> i love it Schmaug. but yeah um so and kind of like you said carrie like watching wolf walkers the first time was like okay I'm, i will absorb the story and then watching it the second time i noticed so much stuff like artistically about it what a delicious film it's tasty oh my <laughs> god tasty. the first shot like we were watching it the first time and the first shot we were both both like oh yeah here we go it's just a really beautiful forest shot with like a bird in a puddle just like bathing itself and it's just it's beautiful a nice mood setter and it it it, it it shows you how much they've in, improved since like song of the sea which was no slouch <laughs> yeah and like I, I i say breadwinner is still probably my favorite card oh, yeah. but this movie is beautiful to look at it's Drop Dead Gorgeous. It's probably one of the prettiest movies I've seen since Spider-Verse. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. I have not obsessed over a movie's aesthetics and visuals this much since then, because it just felt like 
oh my god, this is like, it. this felt to me like Disney at their absolute peak of 2D animation in terms of the sheer detail and the character acting and the ambitious visual design. It's just, ah, oh, it's so tasty. And it was very like Xerox age of Disney sketchy too, like big milk call energy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely the forest scenes. They left a lot of construction lines in. Exactly. Yeah. The end. It makes it look more like feral, feral and Untamed. lively almost. Because like everything in the uh, village of Kilkenny, which is actually where a uh, cartoon saloon is based, it's a uh, one horse town. There's li- literally one horse in this movie. Yeah, like everything <laughs> is so rigid and angular, and like With the forest. There's like no straight lines in the forest. Yeah, like, everything's curved. Like I, I made a note that like the fourth shot of the movie, there's like this elk, and you can see the construction lines in its body, which gives it this unfinished look, but it's like an untamed look. Like nothing about nature is refined. Yeah. Yes, but like the aesthetic of the town is actually based on like old woodblock print. So ah. you know they kept a lot of blocky shapes and dark shading because that's what you had to do with the woodblock prints in order to make the the prints yeah in order to make the prints distinctive enough to stand out on the woodblocks but yeah Yeah. you know it fits with the themes of the movie where you have this town where everything is rigid and structured and you have you know the english coming in and saying you know this is your place learn it obey it and you know forget about this like cromwell (laughs) (laughs) there's a lot Lord Protector of England. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not in name, but it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of the uh, rigidness of the uh, town, there's some subtle and then some not-so-subtle imagery of, like, bars and chains. Like, it's, it's like, to feel trapped. I really like one of the establishing shots where you see, like, the forest and it's all curvy. And then you see, like, the flat perspective of the town and it's just a square. Just like a box. It's very contained. Yeah, they look down from a hill and there's this little circular branch that they sit on right at the edge of the forest and look God, down at the town. Me. Not the branch, <laughs> but the person sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, the town... It does, like, Cartoon Saloon has this aesthetic where things are, it's this weird, like, flat but 3D thing. They did a similar thing in The Secret yeah. of Kells, where... Yeah. yeah. You know what, I, I, that just reminded me of some shots later in the sculleries, particularly when uh, Robin and the old lady are, like, walking up the stairs, and they're, like, not laid out... Proportionately? Pers- Perspective-wise. They're not laid yeah. out properly, technically. Uh, and then... Like, I think about, like, in the forest, how the perspective is correct, because I I think it's kind of like a melding with nature thing versus how unnatural, you know, civilization is. And, like, they don't meld with it the same way. In Kells, the aesthetic choice was everything is in a flat perspective, except for when there's danger. Then there's, like, actual 3D perspective. But it's sort of the opposite here. Like, when she's in the town, when she's in Kilkenny, that's the main character, Robin. When she's in the town, everything is kind of just angular and kind of flat and drab. But when she's in the forest, everything is, you know, like it's... No straight lines. No straight lines. And the colors. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, the color palette accentuates it too, for sure. Every frame, a painting in this movie, like honestly. So the film opens with uh, some uh, woodcutters chopping down the forest. And, forest. And then a wolf attacks. Oof. But then they're called off by um, Rose Quartz. Rose Quartz and <laughs> and Little Steven Universe. <laughs> nah, uh, what's her? What's um? What's the? Uh, I believe the Maddie mom's name is Mo- Molly. Molly. I believe. I don't know what the mother's name is. I just always hear her called Mummy. Mammy. Mammy. Uh, Mummy, she, not Mammy. Well, not Mammy, but she says like <laughs> my mommy. Yeah. M O L L, but because it's Gaelic, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. And her little baby, uh, uh, Maeve, Maeve. which is B H, but it's pronounced V. Like, this is what I mean. I- Ireland, you're drunk. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. Um, they attack the woodcutter, but then these two come out and heal him. And then we get the title card, and it's like, wow, I'm immediately invested. <laughs> yes. And I don't want to give away all of the plot. No, because we want you to watch it. We want it. you to watch it. <laughs> please, please watch this movie. It is so good. I am, like, obsessed with this movie right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we oh, just want to yeah. give you a little taste. <laughs> yeah, and absolutely A little supported. nugget, a little nugget, open your mouth. <laughs> oh, delicious. Um, <laughs> yeah, let me just say before we get started, as a, like, imperative to see this, this might be one of my favorite movies of all time. It's in that caliber for 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 me. Yeah, it's very, very good. I honestly agree. <laughs> like you gotta vote with your dollars too. Um, the box office for it right now is fifty thousand dollars, which you can't really hold it against it, considering the times. 
But if you get if you have the opportunity, whether on home release or if you have access to one of the film festivals it's streaming through, uh, please, 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 please give it your dollars. Yes. Uh, Cartoon Saloon needs a win. I don't think they've ever had a box office success. Not really. Yeah. We don't want another missing link situation. Yeah, they're like Leica without the Coraline. <laughs> like, yeah. The they're like money. Nike. They're like Leica without the Nike money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But okay, so we get our title card and we're introduced to Robin Goodfellow. Goodfellow. Who, who is adorable. Can I just say? Yes. She's cute. She's sweet. Uh, she's a hunter. She's a hunter. A hunter or, of beasts, I... <laughs> well, her dad is. Um, her dad is played by Sean Bond. I Sean guess. Bean. Seen Bean. Boromir. <laughs> um, the Game of Thrones guy. <laughs> man, I noticed so many good things about his character design while we were watching it, which I pointed out to Jason. Like, the line of his facial hair, how it like goes right into the lines of his ears and stuff. Yeah. Like That's just good character design. Because anytime you're able to draw one line instead of two, especially in things like animation and comics, you're just saving yourself time. It's just smart design. It's very good. And he's such a soft character. He's for a his soft daughter. daddy. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> he's a... <laughs> No, he's a. I am endeared to him. He's yeah, he, he's sad and soft. Like Sean Bean's performance in this movie is everybody's performances in this movie is really good. But Sean Bean, I have a soft spot for because you know Boromir. But yeah, another thing design wise is uh, he's got like the the Roman nose kind of thing where he's like upper face kind of arcs outward where uh robin's kind of she's got like a pointy nose of hers that marks him. So their silhouettes kind of fit together, which is very cute to me. Because they love each other. Ah, yeah, they're, they have a nice relationship. Yeah. We're like, they've just moved from uh, Northern England, and they kind of have to settle into being kind of strangers in a land that doesn't really like Englishmen. And 2D from Gorillas is being a real b- to Rob. That one kid. <laughs> he reminds me of M- Matt Tholomew from Owl House, too. Kind of, yeah. Kind of a mix between him and, and 2D. Yeah, like, there's... How 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 deep should I get into this without actually with before we've met the Wolfwalkers? I know, man, but we gotta stop cussing. <laughs> it just gives me more work. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> In a Q and A for the Cork Film Festival, uh, d- the directors Tom Moore and uh, is it Rob or Ross? Ross Stewart. They talked about how the main allegory with the Wolfwalkers was that of like immigrants, oh. like people who well, you know what immigrants are, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like. Uh, the Irish people's response to the Wolfwalkers, and especially like Cromwell's response to them, is like, "Oh, these are bad things. We bad, bad, evil." Except they were here first. <laughs> yeah, it's like basic xenophobia and, and all that. Sure. But like, even before we meet, we get into that. Robin and her father like have to deal with sort of like being ostracized and kind of looked down upon by the Irish people because they they hate Oliver Cromwell and it's for pretty good reasons. Yeah. Like, not even just in the cartoon, but like in real life. (laughs) Yeah, this is the English at their most English. Mm -hmm. There's a cat, there's a kitty cat in this movie and my note was Panger Bond let himself go. (laughs) (laughs) He's just a scruffy orange cat with one eye. Well, Panger Bond is a girl, so... (laughs) Well, f*** me then. (laughs) Anyway. You say something, Carrie. Um, so yes, I, yes, gush, gush. I've only seen this movie once, plus watched a ton of clips on YouTube. So a lot of the beginning is not like in any of the clips that I was able to watch. So oh yeah, fair yeah, enough. I'm kind of behind on like the details of the beginning because obviously I can't make podcast notes while I'm in a movie theater. True. Well, I mean, you were alone in the theater. You probably could have. <laughs> well, I was watching <laughs> no, it, but no, I was watching it with my friend Sarah, so I wasn't alone. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, and we didn't make any notes until the second watch because you know we wanted to pay attention. Yeah. But like uh, Robin's deal is that where she grew up, she would often help her dad with hunting. So she doesn't want to like just Katniss. yeah, she doesn't want to like stay in the village and yeah, work in the scullery. Maybe. She wants to go out and hunt in the and hunt in the woods. Dangerous. Lord Protector's like re- regime in uh, Kilkenny in Ireland in particular is uh, very conservative. All children must remain inside the walls. Yeah, very conservative. Very like you do this as a as a woman, you do this as a man. The end. The end. <laughs> yeah, do it or else you go into into stocks. stocks. Yeah, this was like the time frame that this is set in is kind of the beginning of Protestantism and Pilgrimism. I don't know if there's such they're thing. dressed the like Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah basically but you know it's it's kind of like the precursor to victorian manners and how there's a proper role for everyone in society this is how our lord god demands it this is virtuous just do as you're told which but, wolves don't have to do yeah robin's like screw that noise and she follows her father out into the woods they, along with her pet falcon merlin merlin 
Um, they do this setup with like a wolf trap that weirdly doesn't have a payoff. I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah, it's like a defied Chekhov's gun. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I put a note here because she uh, looks at a wolf paw print and like puts her hand up against it. And my note was, it's like the good dinosaur, but I'm not pissed. <laughs> <laughs> it's also good. <laughs> I mean, it's also kind of like the scene in Lion King. <laughs> Our brother bear. I mean, what a common trope. <laughs> but I don't know, for some reason I thought about the good dinosaur and got mad. <laughs> Oh, the palette of the forest, like I already said, it's beautiful. Can we talk about the backgrounds, Jason? Pull up those screenshots we took. Because yeah. I want to give a shout out to every single person who worked on the backgrounds. Oh, yes, yes, They've yes, all yes. probably got course, stupid Gaelic names. So I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Gaelic names are beautiful. They are beautiful. I love, I just don't know I love Irish them. culture, let me just say. I'm probably Irish. Yes. I definitely have Scottish ancestors, but not Irish. Um, yeah, we took some screenshots of the uh, credits while we were watching, just because I want to give some shout outs here, because the backgrounds are, are they watercolor, Carrie? Yes, they are definitely watercolor. And everything about how they're constructed directs your eye, whether it's the trees bending a certain way or the, just the brush strokes. Everything directs your eye to the action, which is it's almost like the really smart editing in Fury Road, how yeah, it directs how your really eye. everything is in the center, right? Everything's in the center, or if, like, a cut goes one way, the next cut will follow that trail. Like, yeah. Tom Moore's films in particular, they use a lot of, like, circular shots definitely. where, like, most of the action is in the center of the frame. Yeah. It's really hard to describe, like, in words, because it's, it's obviously something very visual, but just the way they play with light and shadow um the screenshots aren't loading up unfortunately but yeah it's just good basic artistic principles of like laying out a scene to draw your eye to a certain part of the screen where the action is and create a certain mood like it uses shapes to tell you how it directs your your mood yeah. yeah all of their movies have been like this where even like the animation itself this is the like the culmination of their character animation matching to their layout work but All of their movies have been some of the most visually striking in terms of the color palette and the use of light and shadow and all of that since the very beginning. For sure. Okay, yeah, we got our screenshots to load here. I want to give like a specific shout out to the background supervisor. uh, What is that? Stefano Scapolan and key background lead artist uh, Ludovic Gavier. These two must have been the leads on this just gorgeous work. Like... uh, Animation's cool, (laughs) but I feel like I've never really seen a movie that went so hard with the precise composition of the backgrounds. Just like every single shot directs your eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's great. It's so good. Like this movie, the visuals, like Disney does a lot of really, really amazing production design work. Cartoon Saloon is almost like if more of the concept art feels like it's making it on the frame. Which we love. Yeah. Like Book of Life. Yeah, you love to see it. <laughs> you love to see it. Because you don't see it that often. Like, shout out to Book of Life for being one of the very few, like, big release animated movies that actually looks like it's concept art. But that's the kind of thing you get, is you get the harsher angles, you get the bigger contrast in light and shadow, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. you know, it just makes a very visually striking movie. Yeah, there was a conceptual trailer that came out in 2017 or 16 of Wolfwalkers, and, like, there's some obvious changes in character design, but not much. Ooh, like, it, like comparing a... Uh, the conceptual trailer of Song of the Sea to the finished project, it's way different. Uh-huh. But the differences in the Wolfwalkers one are minimal at best. Nice. Which is cool. Oh, um, something kind of, it's kind of similar to Spider-Verse actually, how like some of the characters are colored outside the lines, quote unquote. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which, which is a cute decision. Um, yeah. Uh, Robin finds herself in the midst of a wolf attack on the farmers. The same farmers. The same farmers Stop. from before. Well, no, they were woodcutters. That's oh yeah, woodcutters. But uh, she tries to shoot one, but accidentally shoots her bird. Marilyn. Marilyn. And uh, Merlin is taken away by one of them wolf walkers. <laughs> I like this woodcutter character. Like, he's a character who very easily could have been stinky, but it turns out he's, like, nice. Yeah, yeah. he's the he's the uh, woodcutter who got hurt by the wolves and is healed by Maeve's mom. I didn't think about this until we were towards the end of the movie, but is his outline work kind of sketchy, too, a little bit? A little bit. So his outline work is very circular. Like, yeah. this yeah, is the yeah. thing. So That's it. The Lord Protectors, soldiers, and people who are close to the top of the hierarchy in the town have very angular designs. 
where yeah, he's round yeah he's rotund everything in the forest is a circle yeah whenever the wolves get together it's all forms a circular pattern a lot there's like these arcing rocks that lead into the wolf den, etc but yeah like some of the townspeople who are native to ireland have more circular designs where yeah again true. it's more the lord protector who all angles like he has this big triangle right in the middle of his face yeah he's got another good line design kind of like uh robin's father where like the his jowls kind of lead into the furrow of his brow in an X shape. Yeah. It's very good design. He's been Just... marked by Master Xehanort. Wow. <laughs> He's like that guy from Full Metal Alchemist. Anyway. <laughs> There's some cute background decisions in this shot where, like, there's sheep in the background, but, like, they're very simple sheep just kind of bouncing around instead of being colored in. It's just kind of like a splotch of color. Yeah. <laughs> or, like, oh, it's like an illustration. It's this movie's pretty. Yeah, it's like uh, the sheep in Kells, kind of. Yeah. A lot of this movie is kind of like uh, Kells, but a little better. <laughs> On steroids. A little. <laughs> <laughs> a little. Uh, well, it's like, Kells is a good movie, but uh, it's like, you know, it's, I'm trying to think of a nice, because I, I, I do like that movie a lot, but it's, it's simpler, is yeah. the thing. It's, a, it's the debut movie, so it's not going to be like, you know, like, oh, <laughs> I can't speak. <laughs> I mean... You say that, but then let's look at some other studio debuts. Oh, oh yeah, Coraline, Toy Story. Not to not to poop all over Cartoon Saloon. It's just it's it's smaller. Yeah, it's a smaller studio, and and they've they'd mostly worked as in shorts and TV up until that up to that point. And so. I mean, but I mean, like Kells itself, it's kind of like just self contained. It's a boy, and then the Vikings come. Yeah, and it sucks. <laughs> not the movie. The Vikings. not the movie. The Vikings. <laughs> yeah, they're a problem. Bloody Vikings. But yeah, Wolfwalkers is pretty much if taking the concepts of uh kills and really expanding on them like every kind of complaint i had about kills is rectified here <laughs> like there's a lot more characterization strong characterization a lot of like religious scenes are the same too kind of like yeah kind of another thing is that this movie has like stronger characters kills things are kind of just up in the air in terms of the story and the theme where this is a very definite story that... It's just a redhead Sid from Toy Story hanging out with Willie Nelson. <laughs> Sorry. That's Sorry. Kel she's talking about. Yeah, that's Kel. Not... <laughs> he does look like Willie Nelson. <laughs> he, he does look like Willie Nelson. Oh, sorry, sorry, Carrie. Yeah, you're fine. Compare Kel's visuals to Wolf Walker's visuals, and it's not even a comparison. Like, mm -hmm. I just watched a bunch of scenes from Kel's. It's very, like, minimalist in terms of motion. It's like Charmander compared to Charizard. Like, Charmander is still very good, but Charizard <coughs> has wings. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's an evolution. It's it's bigger. All right, yeah. Carrie, what was the smart thing you were going to say? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> if you've seen Persepolis, where it's, like, a very clean-lined movie and, like, the snowfall kind of has... It feels computerized. It feels like it was based on vectors rather than like organic yeah. motion. Oh. Wolfwalkers has that kind of like completely handcrafted organic feel to it. Yeah. What, was Kills hand drawn or was it done in Flash? I believe the characters were hand drawn, but the whole thing was composited in Flash. Yes. Flash or Toon Boom or something. Was Toon Boom around back then? I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> it looks very Flash though. That sounds like something that I should have researched before the episode. <laughs> Oh, Lord, and in Wolfwalkers, once we finally get to the scene where everything is hand animated, even the backgrounds will get into that. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. We'll get there. Before that, uh, Robin meets with uh, Maeve, the Wolfwalker. In her wolf form, which is so cute. Yes. In a scene that's like Brother Bear, but I'm not pissed. <laughs> <laughs> you can come out now. I can smell ya. You stink. She is also like Ashlyn, but like uh, scruffier <laughs> is about what my notes say. She is very round. She is chaotic. She is it's pure chaotic energy. But, like, that's the contrast, right? It's She's freedom. Yeah. Right? She's cute chaotic energy. Yes. Babe, oh, Maktire. Yes. Maktire means wolf. Yes. She gets caught in a trap like Keen I did, only more charming. <laughs> <laughs> Maid breaks her out, but bites her. Oh, no. Yes. Bites her as a wolf. That's probably fine. Except that, like, we get a peak of... The wolf sight. The wolf, wolf vision. vision. As the credits call it. And the wolf vision lead was, what's her name? Jason. Uh, I'm him McNamara. I just had, I just realized I don't know if this is a woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm him McNamara, who, um, this is just totally anecdotal, has nothing to do with anything. Guardians of Gahul. 
Go. Just to take a real tangent, there is a wolf character named Namara. She is a wolf, so I just associate that name with wolves. So it's just kind of cute to me that someone named McNamara did the wolf vision animation. Anyway, I'll let you guys talk. (laughs) (laughs) The wolf vision is like one of the most amazing things that I have ever seen animated. It is so good. (laughs) You were comparing it to a Kaguya. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's Kaguya. Yeah, it's... So it's similar to the scene in Princess Kaguya where she's running away from the city in its strict order and all of a sudden everything gets like really inky and really sketchy and it's just like this blur of energy. The wolf vision, another thing that I would compare it to is a, oh my god, I'm forgetting his name, director of The Thief and the Cobbler. Richard Williams? Richard Williams. Shame me for forgetting that name. Yes. Shame, oh, you're shame, fired. shame. It reminds me of a Richard Williams scene where the entire background is in motion. It just looks amazing. Yeah. Oh my god. It's very pretty. The way that they do how the wolves see with their noses almost, where and their ears. you have these different colored lights that represent the yeah. smells that things are giving off, and they're like these... It's like eagle vision in Assassin's Creed. It's like <laughs> it's like Toph vision on Avatar, when she, how she sees the sound waves, like, like because they... Oh, there's a really cool shot later where her dad is like coming to the door and every time he takes a step you see like a flash of him yeah because she can hear him it's cool you can hear with your paws and smell with your nose with your nose and see things without with while closing your eyes yeah like one of the absolute principles that's necessary for a good movie is to use the senses you have to be able to not just you're watching what's happening you have to make it so that you can almost feel it and taste it and smell it and <sighs> like in land before time when spike eats that delicious grass <laughs> Am I wrong? You're not, actually. <laughs> oh, tasty. Town tasty. <laughs> Town tasty. A-, a cute stylistic thing I noticed was uh, Maeve has a notch out of her ear in her human form, but not in her wolf form. And then Robin gets like a rip in her hood in her human form, but like no marks. Huh. Spoiler. To- okay, let's go into spoiler zone now. She got bit. She turns into a wolf now. She's a wolf walker. A wolf walker. A wolf walker. But her wolf form is like complete. And I think it's like, like their human form is only like half the story. Like their the wolf form, like you know what I mean. With their wolf form, they are complete. Kind of, yeah, Like they're more. At, Robin feels more like in her own skin when she's a wolf than she is as a a person. Yeah, like like the the human form is still part of it, but it's not the whole story. So they got a little notch missing. I'm running with um, the wolves yeah. tonight. I'm I... running with the wolves. Uh, I was gonna so say awesome. some of the wolf vision scenes remind me of a music video, and it's probably because there's a song sequence. Yeah. That part. The wolf designs for Robin and Maeve specifically, something's very Disney about them. Something was very familiar to me about them, but it just made them appealing. Yeah. I I love the uh the regular wolves too, how they move in like a wave. Yeah, yeah. Like the boars from Mononoke is what it reminds me of. You know what uh Robin and Maeve and their wolf forms is like? It's like a uh, sword in the stone when Merlin and wart would turn into different animals but like it kept their like primary colors like merlin is blue and yeah uh wart is kind of brownish red excuse me so you could always tell like it was them thank you for reminding me of a comparison that i forgot to put in my notes because yeah people reference the sword in the stone as being one of the best works of character animation ever made specifically is, because <laughs> they were able to animate animal characters and still maintain all of the human characters quirks in terms of how they move what they look like and you know it's obvious that they're them yeah i love that movie wolf walkers does the same damn thing its character animation is so so detailed cartoon saloon's previous movies they tended to be more smooth and rounded Mm -hmm. and you know they didn't have that kind of attention to detail with how the characters moved but you can just feel like every hesitation in their mind and every single thing that they're feeling god it's so good especially when Maeve kind of gets all defensive when robin brings up her mother and like what's happened to her and she's like my mom is fine she's fine nothing will happen to her but you can tell in like her eyes and how she's like composing herself that she's really stressed out about it they capture the nervous energy where she's kind of like tapping her feet a little bit and like shuffling around not completely steady yeah and they do the okay another thing that emphasizes that feeling of freedom is that robin in the town is very withdrawn she Mm -hmm. keeps her arms close to her body and doesn't move too much and everything is more restrained and in the wild you can just see the leaping out and it 
Ah, uh, it's so perfect. There's I'm gonna shot. gush about this. There's a beautiful shot animated by James James Baxter. James Baxter, our other boy, up on the Pantheon with like Glenn Keane and Richard Williams and Milt Call. We we called out all our boys this episode, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, but uh, James Baxter does a cute shot during the running with the wolf sequence. Oh, there was a scene like earlier where the where like Robin's running away from the wolves. And, yeah, uh, don't you just love a good cinematic parallel? Yeah, it's like oh, it's, it's good. It's the same shot, but like I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah. But like I was saying, though, I love the way the wolves kind of move in a wave. And like I said, it kind of reminds me of the boars from Mononoke, how they just kind of move as one. And I I had to notice that they, like the wolves meld together as one. But then you've also got sheep in this movie. And you often think about sheep as like just being kind of mindless and all together. But they are a little more individual compared to the wolves. But it's like, I think it's like a strength of the pack thing. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. And it's like when the wolf, uh, you might are, uh, you're right, you were probably going to talk about this, but yeah. like when the wolves, they're, they're, they like move together and such, but they feel like they're more lively and individual. But when the town, when the people of the town are moving, they're like kind of all moving in the same direction and like, moving in the same way. Yeah, like there's a shot of the guards like sleeping at the gate and I think they're even snoring in sync. Yeah. But then later all the wolves are standing in a circle and they're, this is like one of the only times they're ever kind of rigid like that. But if you actually look at them. None of them are breathing in sync, you know? Yeah. Ugh. It's very good. Freedom. Freedom. Again, Freedom. This, uh, this is just a movie where every single artistic detail, the more I've looked into it, emphasizes the themes of the movie on an artistic level. Mm. So you just have this wholeness of vision in this movie that elevates it to another level because again every layer down you look there's more and more details that perfectly fit the theme just god this movie is so good i love it this is why i think it might be one of my fa- all-time favorites there was a really pretty scene transition where like the color kind of faded out but then yeah, it faded then it back, came in. back in and then a little bit later you, you see a transition back to the town where it's just this wipe shot yeah like even that even even the wipes in the in the forests are more interesting. Yeah, like even just the amount of thought. Like, has there been this much attention to detail since like Spider Verse, Last Airbender? Like, I love a well constructed cartoon. <laughs> uh, but that's the thing about animation. It's like everything has to be made from scratch, even in stop motion, even in CGI, any form, even in puppetry. You have to make everything. So decisions have to be made. For every little thing, from the background to the lines to how much or how little you'll clean it up to the colors to the sound design, everything. Nothing exists, you know? Yeah. Heck, this is why we love cartoons here at Destination Animation, your trip around the world, etc. 100%. I'm glad that you said that because, like, I was going to say the same thing earlier. The reason why animation often rewards rewatches is because everything you see in the movie is deliberate. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't want to diss on live action because they do do a lot of production design in live action so that things are more deliberate. But in animation, whenever you see something on screen, it's because somebody decided to put it there. Right. Whereas if you're filming on like a street in, I don't know, where do they film? Toronto or like Vancouver. That's where all movies are made. Yes. I mean, stuff that's there, it's just there. It wasn't deliberate. Yeah. Nothing in animation is accidental just by the nature of it. It can't be. It, it can't accidentally yeah. exist. It literally is impossible. So yeah, you can look at any one element and ask yourself, why did the animators, the artists choose to put this there? And answering that question is fascinating to me. And again, this is just one of those movies where I want to go into as much detail as possible because it's so good. Blu-ray, please. Yes, please. You can put it out on Apple TV, whatever, but do I want, I want a physical copy. <laughs> like when the world world ends and technology is gone and the internet crashes we'll i want physical media <laughs> we'll still have our playstation yeah we want to support our favorite artist shut up and take our money <laughs> man like i don't want to get too into the plot because we do want to encourage people to watch this and we're already like coming up on 90 minutes of gushing here which uh, is almost as long as the movie <laughs> it's yeah. all fun it's probably going to beat Coraline for our longest episode but we did have a really long newsreel but anyway the color palette of the town is so cold and gray, but like in the house, it's very nice yeah. and orange until her dad gets mad. And then it's got these like blotches of red on it. Yeah. Until like the mood breaks and he calms down. It's just. Yeah. When oh, everything is there's good. There's a great scene later on, like when the it's really like tension filled and the borders of the screen get like really They're small. Closing in. Closing in. And her Robin's dad gets all 
sketchy kind of like kind of like the wolves almost like yes. when he gets when he gets really mad he gets like kind of sketchy and the mood lighting gets all red and it's <sighs> the, the, the shot though of like the borders coming in and it's really claustrophobic yeah. it's like a spring winding up and it's just gonna it's just gonna let go and the tension breaks when it lets go it like gets when the borders go away it gets really into how constricting the society is to robin yeah and what you were saying with the getting mad, like, that's a thing that they do to emphasize the emotions is like, there's one scene where Robin is like stunned that somebody got that mad. And all of a sudden, the background for just a split second jitters, Yeah, you know, the colors all move around and then it settles. And again, it hammers the shock home. So, oh, uh, God, it's so good. It's so good. I want to cry. It's so good. Just before we move away to other topics. I just wanted to point out this during the scene in the house. This is spoilery. It's cute because the dad sits down to eat, and the wanted poster of the wolf on their door is. It's, 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 it's probably the least subtle thing, <laughs> but at the same time, like I didn't notice it till the second time. Yeah, it's you. it's a reward rewatches kind of thing. I made a note about how some of the layouts in this movie are very like comic booky, and Jason, you told me. Yeah, Tom Moore actually wanted to get into comics uh, uh, with uh, his friend Ross Stewart, the co-director. Yeah, like before they got into animation, so makes sense. Um, and some of the character design choices I was mentioning earlier are something that makes sense for comics too, where you got to draw the same character over and over. The less yeah. lines you have to draw, the better. Yeah. And there's like scenes in the movie where it's like kind of set up with like three panel shots mm. showing you like... But even, different perspectives and even what the ones characters that aren't are doing. as obvious like that, just there's a lot of good blocking. Is that the word? Yeah, yeah. sure. <sighs> I mean, we're we're gonna get into the climax here if we keep talking too much. So, is there any more gushing you just want to do? Oh, there was something else that I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah. So, I will say that the story, like this, feels kind of like a Disney story in terms of like there was one reviewer that compared it to movies like Pocahontas and that this is like what Pocahontas and Brave wish Should wished been. they were. Yeah. I read a review. I linked a really, this movie has like a 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. And when a movie is like, has a really good rating like that, I like to look at the bad reviews. Oh yeah. It's just to see like what it is people have a beef with. <laughs> one of the, uh, one of the bad reviews is literally just like, uh, well, it's like Sword in the Stone and Brave, which we've both mentioned which we have, rather, we have also mentioned, but, like, not to its detriment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of, yeah, it's funny. I would say that that review, it, like, the problem that the reviewer had with the movie is that she's the villain and she doesn't like it. Yeah, yeah basically. Uh, I haven't read that yet, so that'll be interesting. She's so, basically uh, criticizing it as a, fushy, as a fussy British conservative who's like, well, a lady's proper place is, you know, yeah, and, like, how dare you look down on the, on the You know lady. who would agree with her? Oliver Cromwell. <laughs> Lord protect oh. out of England. <laughs> oh, there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about, which was in relation to what you were asking about. And that was like a question about what? So like the Irish had some pagan mythology with St. Patrick. And the answer is yes. So this is my religion degree coming in here. But nice. the, Please. the Catholic. Wish I went to school. So <laughs> the Catholic faith in a lot of areas what happened is in order to convert all of the pagans to Catholicism, what they would do is like, say this area had a parade to, or like a festival celebrating their local, like pagan gods of the harvest or something. They would say, all right, you can still have that parade, but now it's to the Virgin Mary. So yeah. there are a lot of pagan myths that got incorporated into Catholicism. And it's one of the reasons why the Reformation happened is because the English were like, no, this this was not originally part of God's plan. That is pagan myth, you know. And so this movie is actually more accurate than you might think in terms of like English Protestantism trying to reform not just the Catholicism, but the original religion that got incorporated into the Catholicism as like heresy and paganism and like satanic and you know. So yeah, like legit. This this movie actually has quite a bit of history to it that fits. I have not seen a movie with such dense religious themes since The Grinch 2019. <laughs> 2018. 2018. But um, like, uh, my question for that was like in the context of the movie's universe itself, like did St. Patrick actually make a pact with like pagan gods? <laughs> I don't believe he actually made a pact with pagan gods, but again, there was some incorporation of pagan 
symbolism into Irish Catholicism. Cool. There's different versions of Catholicism, like there's a Spanish Catholicism and there's an Italian Catholicism and whatever. Yeah. Uh, we're watching a clip right now just to get a screenshot of something to show you, Carrie, and it's when uh, Robin and her dad are talking and she's trying to get him to listen to her and like he's got his hands closed and fists and she's like pulling his fingers open. It's like, oh, like yeah. please like open up and she's listen. She's trying oh. to get, oh, it's good. Look at the cartoons! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love me a cartoon. Oh yeah, and there's there's plenty of scenes in the town where they're behind metal gates or like you yeah, know, the grates yeah. in the windows and it looks prison-like. Her father at one point escapes from literal chains as... Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. so... Uh, like I was saying, it's hard to like continue because we're getting into like climax territory. One thing I do want to say about the climax, just as we've been talking about how the forest is very round and the city is very angular. Um, Jason was pointing out the fire when we were watching it, how like jagged it is. Yeah. yeah. And there's a point during the climax where they are busting into the wolf's place. And um, that's one of the most jagged, sharp, angular shots is like the the hole they make. Yeah. It's good, man. The fire is beautiful, mm. by the way. Yeah. Just the motion of it. Ugh. Ah! Gush, 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 gush. I love it, I love it, I love it. We could probably scream about this movie for another three hours, but we really do want to encourage people to actually, like, watch it. Commence yeah. screaming for three hours. Ah! <laughs> and we want to leave Jason some stuff to talk about in his video, which he will do on his channel. So I guess on that note, um, do you think this is a good point to wrap it up? Anything else you guys wanted to say? One last thing. The climax reminded me of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Yeah, a lot of this movie is kind of like Hunchback. And, like, it's a really devout Christian guy who, like, really wants to... <laughs> just control. Control, control people, yeah. Yeah. But without, like, the horny angle. <laughs> The dregs of society all mingle together in a shallow, drunken stupor. <laughs> Ireland! <laughs> <laughs> Let's end it there. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, as a summary, I would say this movie is like a lot of the classic Disney movies in terms of themes and character arcs, but exceptionally good. Like, it out-Disney's Disney. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And it's hand drawn, which you don't see a lot of lately. So please, please vote with your dollars. Please go see it. Okay, yeah. Do we recommend this movie? Hell yes. Yes. I have not watched a movie yes. like this since Coraline. I yeah. want this movie to win the Oscar. I know Soul is still going to be good, but God, just on principle, I want this to win the Oscar. Cartoon Saloon has put in the work. They deserve it. Like I said way before, like an hour ago, the breadwinner is still probably my personal favorite on an emotional level, but this is a beautiful movie and i wish everyone could see it i wish it wasn't restricted to apple tv or whatever that's dumb that's the dumb thing about streaming services isn't it now that everything's so spread out yeah, yeah it's a shame anyway um, streaming you were supposed to destroy cable not become it not join it <laughs> <laughs> you are the chosen one <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness we are just determined to make this a star wars podcast <laughs> no, no 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 star wars is, star wars is dead no <laughs> star wars is dead to me except for the mandalorian all right is mandalorian a cartoon no um <laughs> but like yeah so song of the sea is still my personal favorite cartoon saloon movie but like wolf walkers is on a whole other level in terms of animation yeah yeah um, so I guess we can wrap it up here. I'll, I'll, uh, so, um, yeah, so I'm the, I literally just did, like, my name change paperwork, like, two days ago. So I am Becca Knott. Now, wow. Officially, legally. And you can find me, uh, my social media has changed. I'm at BexDK on Twitter now. That's B-E-X-D-E-E-K-A-Y. I'm drawing, I'm animating, kind of on and off. But the real content creator is my husband. Oh, yeah, uh, I am Jason Knott. Uh, you can find me. I have a uh, blog, a movie blog, where I have done a written review of Wolfwalkers that's on whatever reviews on blogger.com. And uh, my YouTube channel is Film Freak, which is my usual internet moniker. Uh, yeah, just Film just film Freak. Nothing, spe nothing uh, no other, like, name or You'll probably word see or his Owl House video pop up. Yeah. Uh, when you search for him. The Owl House is great, and here's why. Which I've watched many times, because it's a very nice, constructive video, and I'm oh, not biased. Oh, stop. <laughs> and Carrie, how about you? And my name is Carrie Drebolo, and I do have a couple of YouTube channels, Animation Critic, all one word, which I was going to do a spring anime video, but it fell through, and it's still sitting on my computer, not edited. I'm terrible. Uh, and Sheeta King 243 all one word, uh, another channel that I've been meaning to update, but have not in forever. 
<sighs> I found out I have ADD over the summer, which makes a lot of sense, but I'm still trying to get myself together into an actual productive schedule. Anyway. You can do it, Carrie. The cats really want in, so, so we yeah, should probably so we'll, we'll, sate them. Yeah, let's be cat walkers. But the cat shouldn't cat be in while your mother is out. What? A cat in a hat. Sorry. Oh, I was like, what are you talking Is about? Is that in the hat a cartoon? <laughs> well, certainly not the Mike Myers version. No, that was me channeling my childhood cat in the hat ad on the Dr. Seuss videos. <laughs> Did we mention the Green Eggs and Ham cartoon? Was that this year? That was last year. That was last year. Okay. Oh, well, all right. So this has been Destination Animation. Uh, Mitch, what? play us out. Oh, yeah. that's our, That was our closing. Mitch, play us out. Yeah. Play us out, Mitch. Yeah. My, bro- my brother Mitch. Oh, oh, you can find him and on uh, what's S- Saturn's Heights. Saturn Heights. Yeah. Is he on Spotify or is he on... What's the other one? Well, he's got a Twitter now. He does have a Twitter. Saturn Heights. Um, he's doing more music now. He might actually do a new theme for us. So I guess we'll find out. Ooh. Have you, have you talked to him about that or did you just bring that on? <laughs> no, he mentioned it to me, so okay, I'm cool. actually going to cool. text him right now. <laughs> All right, so uh, Mitch, play us out. Saturn Heights. Woo, goodbye, everybody. I remember when we used to do an intro back when I was a wee lass. Yes. Back when I was a little girl in Alaska. <laughs> in Alaska. What? Were you not referencing Bolto? No, I was quoting uh, the guy I used to watch him. Oh, that's okay. That's a great sentence. Yes. I ask for no elaboration. All right. Jason, you're supposed to say when I was a lad and then start. When I was a lad, I served a term as office boy to an attorney's firm. I swept the windows, cleaned the windows, and I swept the floor. And I polished up the handle of the big front door. He polished up the handle of the big front door. He polished up that handle so carefully that now he is the ruler of the Queen's Navy. And I'm going to stop with the Gilbert and Sullivan now. (coughs) My best friend in high school. (laughs) Okay. My my best friend in high school sang that song at at, uh, a vocal not audition whatever whatever that thing is called where you are like a talent show making no no where you're like making your debut after taking lessons or something not a a debutant no <laughs> is Carrie, is you, it you audition can't. i don't know anyway i'm i'm off topic <laughs> we did not um yeah so you did not I, nots boo <laughs> well now you have to get used to that all your life now Becca. <laughs> oh, wow heck yeah, we um I apologize for for participating in your uh, marginalization. My bad. <coughs> oh, I wish you would. Marginalize me, baby. <laughs> uh- <laughs> Why is anyone here? Are we just cosmic stardust or is there a greater purpose to us being here? Questions. Man, are Carrie, we human or are we st- dancing? You got to come stargazing with me because I've been thinking the exact same thing. All the planets have been out. That's not animation, but it's the like it's the animation of God. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> this episode is sponsored by nobody. I need more water, um, though. Well, Hang on a we sec. we uh, we bought a pair of headphones, so I guess we sponsored it. Yes. This episode is sponsored by. <laughs> Please beat that out. I don't want to give them any promotion. <laughs> Five years in hell. <laughs> anyway. Cartoon Saloon. Uh, so they do have... Uh, no, what do you want? Go give them food to distract them. <laughs> what kind of food should I give them? Just throw them some dental <clears> them <throat> to distract them. Sorry, Carrie. The kids don't like being in the other room. Big fat Nova. Big fat Nova. That's Avatar, the last day, Bender, not the M. Night Shyamalan movie. What about M. Night Sh- No, he never made a movie. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Anyway. <laughs> what? Um, they made a movie out of that cartoon that I really like? What? No, they didn't. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, Gigi, get down. But like, Gigi, Gigi, come home. Hi, Lulu. Please don't. <laughs> no, no. I'll let you in here because you you can be quiet. <laughs> Please be quiet. Hi, baby girl. Okay, I'm back. Okay, Jason just grabbed that screenshot. And Luna has entered the building. Don't you step on anything. Actually, uh, hang on. Yeah, I'll get her. Luna. Yeah, I love you. We're almost done, okay? You won't go for too much longer. Go, go cuddle with the boy. Yeah, they're like right outside the door. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> See, I was hecking, I was expecting us to do more like uh, 
cutesy talk about the wolves, like the wolves and the puppers and the heckin' doggos. They are heckin' doggos, though. <laughs> like, wolves are cute. Yeah, I have to say, yeah. like, personal anecdote, I was terrified of wolves because of Disney, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. That, yeah, I know. Freaking scary wolves. <laughs> it, it's Beauty and the Beast that did it to me. It's like, oh my god, wolves are savage animals. If I even come close to them, they'll kill me, and yeah, Well, no. Peter and the Wolf was the one that did it for me, like, creepy-ass wolf. Yeah, I liked Balto too. as a kid, so I liked wolves. Oh, yeah, but yeah, same. <laughs> Um, Balto's a good boy. Jason learned what the word musketeer means because of this movie. Yeah. It means someone who handles a musket. Well, it's like, you know, the three musketeers and they deal with swords and crap, so it's I've like... I've never actually read the three musketeers. Well, so me I neither. Know. I know there's Maybe four, so... Have... My <laughs> knowledge of the three musketeers comes from Pokemon, where they are swords. Anyway. Yeah, and there's four of them, so it's a big lie. There's a fourth musketeer, D'Artagnan. Yeah, Dart- and I Dart- yeah I know. So three musketeers? No, there's four. It's a big lie. That one actually completely messed me up. Like when I saw Sl- when I saw Slumdog Millionaire for the first time, I was like, wait, did he de- w- did he get the last question wrong? I thought D'Artagnan was the third musketeer. Oh, okay. I guess it's Aramis. I did not know this. <laughs> Wishbone lied to me. They didn't mention it. Oh, <laughs> Wishbone. Wishbone. <laughs> What's the story, Wishbone? Oh, I love Wishbone. I love Jack Russell Terriers. Yeah. This is off topic. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's on topic. Heckin' good doggos. Heckin' good, mm-hmm. good doggos. I do have a note, which it's very, very spoilery. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to say, better dead than a furry. That's <laughs> 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 kind of how this movie ends. <laughs> um, it's kind of true. 